Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. Mainstream education has traditionally involved just our sense of hearing and sight. But today a multi-sensory approach is being explored in different parts of the world to encourage people to develop learning experiences using touch, taste and even smell. Can sound have a smell? Sound strange? Well, let's find out more from Dr. Salim Masmoudi, professor of cognitive psychology in Tunisia, who is applying a multi-sensory approach in kindergartens. At a nursery school in Tunis, children prepare for their weekly class on musical awakening. It uses special equipment to open the kids' senses, giving them an opportunity to touch, smell and even taste through sound. The teaching method is called multi-sensory implicit learning or MIL. With this method, we offer the child a well-structured and structuring framework through active listening that we try to refine by letting him bask in his own familiar hearing environment. That is in itself very rich. Dr. Masmoudi's research focuses on how multi-sensory learning relates to creativity and it aims to enhance positive emotions. In developing the Miller method, he wanted to offer an alternative to the perceived weaknesses of traditional learning practices. The use of the senses and multiple sensory channels develops creative skills in children, but above all improves their abilities to distinguish between emotions, to express feelings. They come out of their shells and become more involved in their actions. Mas Moody says the method has proved beneficial for three years, leading many parents to support him and his research team. Following this method, I saw my daughter was happier. She was very happy to get up early to go to her nursery, so I kept her enrolled. She's calmer. By introducing music through sensory games, the method aims to open new possibilities and enable children to absorb skills rather than acquire them by repetition, an approach that can bolster future learning. I'm in my third year at the conservatory and I'm eight years old. When I was in daycare, I remember playing with sounds with my friends. Moez was introduced to music through the mill method a few years ago. Just like Salim, he chose to improve his learning through singing and playing the piano and guitar. Dr. Masmoudi now aims to move beyond research to put multi-sensory implicit learning into action in schools across Tunisia and the Maghreb. How can a multi-sensory environment full of color, shape and sound help ill or disabled children to learn and connect with the people around them? We visit a special hospital room in the U.S. to find out what difference it can make. Linda Mesbauer is one of the world's leading experts on multi-sensory environments. The upstate Golisano Children's Hospital in Syracuse is among the few hospitals in the U.S. to have one of her specially designed rooms. Every element within these walls has a purpose, getting young patients to a state of absolute relaxation to improve their medical condition. Once you bring down that stress level, increase the pleasure, all right, you get a focus, and that focus is then amenable to learning. And that may be an emotional learning, may be talking when you didn't talk before, or in, in, in a case of dementia, it might even be recalling a memory. Here's the controller. Can you go on Nick, the who's eight, color. is visiting the sensory room for the first time. His tutor, Beth, introduces him to this universe of colors, music, and sensations. After only a few seconds, Nick is captivated by all around him. The room was designed to give the young patients a positive environment to help them cope with their disease and often long-term treatment. 
It's both playground and safe haven. We have a lot of children that are having a really hard hospitalization. Um, they're your typically developing, developing child, but once they get into the hospital, they may regress or they may become kind of introverted and we may want to bring that out. Or we may have a procedure that goes horrible as far as the child's point of view and we may bring them in here to bring their anxiety down. It's dancing to the music. A state of relaxation is said to foster learning and development. Some people with behavioral disabilities find it very difficult to stay focused and develop their mental faculties. The multi-sensory environment helps them get that focus and boost their intellectual abilities. We used to study things in just the visual system, the auditory system. We know now that the overlap is tremendous. I often tell my audiences one plus one equals three because nothing is linear anymore. That's the whole idea of multi-sensory. After a while, Nick is totally relaxed. The aim is that he learns while playing and forgets about being in hospital. They just focus on one thing, so if something's bothering them, they can't clear their head and get that out of there. So this would help because they have other things to distract them. The specialist room helps children learn to cope with pain or disability themselves. It's hoped that they'll be able to use the coping abilities acquired in this environment in the outside world when they eventually leave hospital. What has keeping a rope got to do with learning multiplication? What about hopping to practice spelling? At one school in Germany, teachers are using a combination of movement and multisensory approaches to engage their students. Let's take a look. It may look like an interpretation of the Maori Hakka dance, but these teachers at a Hamburg school are being trained how to use multisensory learning techniques. Before they can awaken their pupil senses, they have to rouse their own. We apply this to the teaching of different subjects, and we're trained here to use different types of multisensory learning. For example, touching something with your hands or doing something while moving. You see different things here, like writing in the sand or in shaving foam. The benefits of writing words in sand or foam might not seem that obvious to an adult, but it can make a difference to children learning to write. It's always nice to try it yourself because it makes you realize how it will be for the kids. Grown-ups are always a bit reluctant at the beginning, but this really helps. The approach used at this elementary school is a combination of multisensory learning and movement. Pupils spell words while jumping or roll around the corridors to do maths exercises. Hopping from pad to pad while spelling words is not just for fun. Movement fosters interconnections in the brain, and interconnection in the brain enhances the learning process and sharpens memory. So skipping with a rope is not just a physical activity here, it can also help with learning how to multiply. We use a skipping rope while multiplying 1 times 6, 2 times 6 or 1 times 9, 2 times 9 and so on. And this is a lot of fun. We do this to train our brain through sports and movements so we can memorize better. We can memorize even better when using music. The pupils are encouraged to translate their emotional response to music into paint on paper. The idea is to get them to make use of their different senses and also to strengthen independent thinking and build self-esteem. The school's approach has overcome an initial skepticism to attract the interest of education experts. All the people that come here are delighted by the learning atmosphere at our school. They are also amazed at how, independently, our kids show that this way of learning is relevant and effective. So erleben kann. And that the kids can get the best out of what a school can offer. The school day ends with kids bringing all of their senses together and expressing themselves through their brass band. Have you ever learned in a multi-sensory learning environment? Do you think it can make a real difference? 
We are looking forward to hearing from you on our social media pages. Goodbye. Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.